Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a retirement worth having. This is my standard mantra that I say at the beginning of every typical kind of audio cast that I've been doing of late. I am simply a man who is a organized person and a researcher and a philosopher and, well, frankly, a pagan priest. And what I have established is that I am no longer straight, strictly Christian. And that's the best way to explain it. The reasons are many, but for the simplest of terms, it's because I do not believe the same things that many of the religious right do. And that is based on my own reading of the good book of the Bible, my establishment of the willingness to read the Quran, and openly my overall knowledge of religions of the world. You see, in all the books I've ever read of many, many faiths and many denominations, the most number one thing that I've learned is that the Lord God made them all. And once we establish that concept, what it means is that Lord God did make someone who has challenges, like a birth defect, and did make someone who has a difficult mind, and did make someone that we might not like or is unkind, to a point. The nature versus nurture can go on in discussion forever, but the truth is, when it comes to a particular type of birth defect, we often don't see it as that. There are many people who recognize people and children of special needs because you can establish that fairly quickly in talking to someone. That someone is a little slower, someone is a little bit uh, more physically inept or whatnot. But there is a birth defect that is often not considered a birth defect and it needs to be considered a birth defect from a religious point of view as well as from a scientific and medical point of view. Under religion, we have understood that the Lord God makes the soul and puts the soul within the individual being. That being then travels through a birth canal where various abnormalities can occur based on a lot of reasons, either nature or nurture. I'm not going to get into that. But the truth is we cannot blame the mother or the father for those things. Sometimes it's the Lord's way to establish a new individual in the community who needs some special accommodations. In the particular birth defect I'm talking about is usually the birth defect of someone who has allegedly or possibly or fully gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is a condition that was taken out of the DSM-4 a very long time ago. So when it comes to mental health, it is not a mental health condition for someone to believe that their body does not match their mind or soul. And the soul is what we're really talking about here. We've had some famous situations in the last few years of some very famous names who have gone out and gone through transition. And what I've always said as a pagan priest is I'm so glad their soul has been satisfied now, that they are no longer in struggle in their soul, which allows them to live a full life in all the areas of life balance that they need. It is a very humbling condition to have genitalia that do not match your soul. Can you imagine trying to go through dating life and other areas of love and intimacy with that challenge or birth defect? What we do with birth defects most of the time is we try to establish is there anything that we can do medically or physically to challenge or improve or mediate that problem. When someone has a cleft with lip, we fix it. When a child is grown with, from, with a tail, if the parents so choose, if it's a safe procedure, we fix it. When we have twins conjoined, we try to fix it so that they have a full life as individuals. When a person has a birth defect in the genitalia area and they're not growing in the direction that their heart, mind, and soul typically is growing, we have to figure out how they can choose to fix it with the right medical community. This is not a religious right community. And no Catholic, no Muslim, no person of religious faith who wants to establish their religious ideas about God's world has the right to do anything to that person. What we do know is that there's 40 maybe 60, I can't remember exactly, years of medical and scientific and social scientific research on how to handle that birth defect. It's pretty straightforward under Henry Benjamin standards of care. It is an old way that that gentleman by his name went into the trade of psychology and medical science to figure out how to best help these people with this birth defect. The birth defect is pretty well established. The person does not feel comfortable in their skin. They look in the mirror and they're sickened by what they see. We have a lot of people with vanity who do all sorts of things with plastic surgery to themselves, but it's not quite the same. They're allowed by choice to do this, and yet for some reason, in a current 
religious overloaded medical community we have people saying whoa you cannot do that to your body just like some of the challenges of women are having with the right to go to certain clinics to take care of situations that they might not have planned for that they cannot afford and they don't have the psycho emotional or intellectual health to handle in terms of bringing a child into the world I don't want to digress. My point is that no other human being has the right to establish what is or isn't correct for adjusting someone's birth defect. What is typically established under Henderman Benjamin's standards of care through the research and reading I have done in that particular condition is that a person goes through the process of transition. The transition involves, first and foremost, some psychology and some talking with some therapists who are well versed in that condition or willing to become extremely good versed with the real leaders of the world in that area of life or study. It is not a situation of a, uh, what do you call it, a women's studies type of thing or a lesbian thing or whatever. I don't know how to say it exactly right. But what it has been established that it is not a mental health problem. There are illegal and immoral medical doctors of religious mindset that is not correct to the Bible or to the Quran or to any other good work that think that God has not done this and that is a lie they tell themselves. God creates all souls and they get put through a birth canal and birth defects can occur. My point in taken on the transition is the transition involves usually two years of psychotherapy of some kind just to make sure there's nothing else going on with the mind that is establishing a wrong direction. That individual actually lives in the opposite at the moment, considered from birth certificate, in that state, and proves that they have the ability to not only be employed, but have successful relationships in that condition. And once that established, they also have the right then to take various simple hormones, hormone rebalancing to put their lives on track. And usually, nine times out of ten, it works exactly right. So, what we've established is that it's a birth defect, that there is a way to handle it through the medical community that has studied it, not some just fly-by-night doctor who wants to give an opinion on it, and openly the established standard of care is to go through a thorough transition where the person crosses over the line and does not live in the middle of it. We know the reason that people should not live in the middle of it, but there are people who want to live in the middle of it, and that's not really safe for them or safe for anyone else in the community. And that's been proven statistically by the level of hate crimes that these people experience by total strangers who think they're of God's mind. They are not. They're hateful people, they're harmful people, they violate all kinds of human rights issues uh, and established treaties of our nations, and openly choosing your own physicians is your lawful right. Thanks for listening. I hope this helps the politicians that asked me to speak on this matter as a journalism uh, individual, as a journalist, if you will, a reporter, an observer, and a columnist. I appreciate your time.